Hi, my name is Steve Jackson. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Cato double crossovers. I wanted to talk about some of the electrical quirks to those units and really what I would consider to be both features and bugs that they have electrically within their mechanism. So first off, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Cato double in double crossover track. It's a SKU number 20-120. You've probably seen these around. Uh, they're a great piece. They're really, really reliable. I've had some that I've been using for more than a decade, and they uh, just work really well. They've got a 33 millimeter spacing from the between the two tracks, which is really awesome. Makes them really convenient for T-track, but other other uses as well. That 33 millimeters is the standard spacing between uh, the the Cato products. So, as far as what's the bug and what's the feature. They have an electrical isolation in two axes in these units. So the first axis is they separate the top from the bottom, which is that green line I've got running left to right there. That to me is a feature. You want to have those two lines isolated. So if we're running on a T-Track module, I want to have each of those two loops being able to be controlled independently. The weird part, the bug, if you will, to me, is that they've isolated the left from the right. Um, that's that red line that goes sort of up down there in the middle. Uh, what were they thinking? I'm not really sure. But what it means is if you put this track unit on a single module, it's 310 millimeters long. So if you put that on a single T-track module, then you create an electrical gap in the, in the loop. Now, it doesn't create the gap for the exterior loop, uh, tracks, the top and the bottom tracks. The gap is on the middle ones. Because uh, if you look at the, the one on the top and the bottom, you can actually see there's a solid rail from one end to the other. It's those middle parts when you run through those switches that it's doing some things inside with the electricals. So if you don't believe me, what you could do is actually look in the middle there, and you'll see that those uh, tracks are all cut in the middle. There's a, a plastic piece that sits in there. And that basically is, is isolating the left from the right on those center tracks. And there are four power routing segment, segments in there, really, if you look at it. Essentially, what's happening is they're power routing, and they're not connecting the two sides. This is four number six turnouts, which is great. Number six turnouts are bulletproof. They're really, really reliable. Um, and it's just four of those mechanically put together and molded together. But um, what that means is you inherit all that power routing which can be good, except in this case where they then lose the connectivity between the left and the right side of this module. Um, we'll show in a minute when we start digging around the inside, there is a, a frog there that's connected and is power routed. And in those two short segments on the inside of the frog, each one of the frogs and those pairs of tracks are all controlled electrically inside the, the unit. So. We'll talk about how to kind of address that if we want to connect the left to the right side. Fundamentally, what we're looking at is we're looking at um, you know, connecting those rails will be sufficient to handle what we're doing. At least at that point, you're passing electricity through this unit and on to the next module or on to the next track piece. So there's really kind of three ways that I've, uh, I would consider doing this, uh, addressing this issue of the electricity not passing from the left to the right. And so the first one I, you could look at is just adding four of those 62 millimeter track pieces to one to each of the four legs, and off you go. And it would work just fine. Um, that is a sufficient way to do that. Now, what you need to do, though, is then connect those to each other. The left and the right needs to connect to each other. So not all four, but just the, the two on the top and the two on the bottom connecting to each other. Um, and you could do that with a three-way connection if you wanted to. So that's like a totally non-mechanical, non-problematic way to do it. The only issue with that is it doesn't fit on a, a single module. Uh, the next part is once you have this track in place, you could actually just drop a piece of, uh, drill a hole, solder rail onto there, and connect the wire from one side to the other. And you could actually cut that gap with a piece of wire underneath the module. The third one is you could mod modify this track piece internally. And that's really what we're going to focus on in this. But just sort of to recap, right, you've got the, the first choice is to add the power feeders on all four legs. No modifications required. It's very simple. But it requires more than a single T-Track module. So it needs to be on a double or larger module where you have the space to add those 62-millimeter track segments. 
The next one is to solder those feeders to the track and then route that electricity under the surface of the module and back up again. Soldering and drilling them could damage the track um, because there are only limited places you can actually solder or drill through there. There's actually a metal plate we'll see in a minute on the back of most of the unit. And so you got to get kind of close to the end. And so it's a little bit fiddly there. If you aren't very good at soldering, you could uh, break that loose and, and then your tracks won't connect at the end. Um, and if you needed to remove the track ever, if you do it that way, then that could be problematic because you've run wire through the track unit, through the module top and back under the, the bottom. But it will fit on a single module this way. So you can install it on that module and you'll be good to go and no problems. The next one is to modify the track internally. So worst case, you could have a bucket full of parts on your hands. They're pretty fiddly inside. There's a lot of little bits and pieces. So I wanted to, to put this video together to kind of show you what the inside looks like to see if it's something that you'd want to actually tackle. Um, a mod upside of this is modifying it internally. You've got a fully contained piece of track for portability. So after you're done, it looks just like it did from the outside. And so it, it could be moved anywhere you want, removed, put back into place, whatever you need. And it fits on a single module, just like that idea of dropping a, the solder, uh, the feeders from one side to the other. So this is the basic of what we're going to address in this, in this video is talking about how do you connect the left to the right side. So this is sufficient and chances are would be just fine for many years. I've got several units, as I said, that I've done this to that have been working this way for many years without any sort of trouble. Uh, but one additional modification you could make is to connect those two power routed segments in the middle. That way, if at some point in time, the power routing feature inside of that module stopped working properly on one or the other of the turnouts, then it would continue to pass electricity through those central components. Connecting those to each other is not sufficient to do what we need. You really need to connect the, the outer longer connections is what you want and those middle ones could be added as needed. So let's get started. You're gonna flip this thing over. As I mentioned earlier, there's two metal plates. So if you were gonna uh, drop a feeder through this unit, you've gotta be on that far end where the metal plates no longer exist. So basically very close to the, to the, the mounting holes that you see on each end. So what I highly encourage you to do is if you're gonna do this, open only one end. Get yourself familiar with what it looks like. Take a picture if you want. Um, you'll want to get familiar with the insides before you open the whole thing up because you do not want to have that bucket of parts I mentioned earlier that you can't get back together. So there's a you definitely want to be careful when you're opening these things up to know what you're getting into. So let's pull one cover off. You just remove those three screws, little, little Phillips head screwdriver, and then this is what you've got. Um, one thing to note is that uh, there is a little plastic part in there that is holding down the two actuator arms, the little metal wires that move the turnout. And so that little plastic lid sometimes will attach to that little dimple on the metal part. Uh, a little bit of moisture or something gets in there and it'll, it'll hook onto that. So if you lift the metal part out and that little plastic piece isn't there, it's probably stuck to the top of that lid that you removed. Put it back in place where it's supposed to go because uh, on the, the, the track piece itself, because it holds those two wires in place. When they fall out, it's really annoying to put them back in there. They're very small, very difficult to get to, and they're kind of in a tight spot. So uh, you wanna try to keep those in place. And I can show you what that looks like with a little bit closer photo. So on the left, that piece is in place. And on the right, I've just shifted it back a little bit so you can see what it's, you know, what it's covering, those two little wires that stick into those uh, two sockets. You'll also notice that that plastic piece has uh, the corners, two of the corners cut out. If you look back over on the left, those two cutout pieces fit into those two bars uh, kind of that are raised on the left side. So it fits one way and not the other. But basically that little piece, you want to keep it in there the whole time you're working here because you want to try to hold those two wires in there. I will tell you when I was uh, taking the photos and doing the work to get this video put together, I did actually have those one of those little parts fall out and I had to put it back together. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of annoying to have to work with. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that little piece and that you were keeping an eye on that. That's the fiddliest part. 
um, other features you want to look at inside of there. So as I mentioned before, it is a, a number six turnout. It's electrically operated. And so this is what a number six turnout looks like. There's just two of them there. Um, as far as the mechanism component itself, there's that black, there are a pair of black arms in there. And the black arms reach around that central coil. So what happens is when you actuate that turnout, it fires off that coil, which then slings the magnets from one end to the other. So that's how you operate the turnout. And then what it does is it will, um, inside, there's that little T-shaped brass piece. It moves that T-shaped brass piece back and forth, which connects different pads on that little electric component. We'll show that in a second as well. One thing I did want to note is, is manually you can operate these turnouts. And that's actually done, you know, you're basically just reaching... The, that black piece has a little nub that comes out that you can see outside of the turnout, and that's what you move back and forth. I circled in the top, that's the hole, basically, where that little piece sticks through. So all you're doing is you're just manually actuating that same black piece that the coil actuates. You're just doing it with your finger instead of using electricity. And then the other thing I wanted to highlight was you've got that actuator arm that I just showed you, that plastic piece that covers it. I highlighted that actuator arm in orange. So what you can imagine is that arm pivots on the left under that plastic piece. And then as the black segment moves back and forth, it pushes the arm back and forth in order to flip the turnout on the top side. So you can see those tracks move. So that's kind of what's happening mechanically underneath this turnout. So as promised, this is the little electrical part at the other end, and I wanted to focus on that. So essentially, you've got four pads in each corner and in that central T component. And what that T component is doing is it's connecting the pads to each other. The pads that are on the right in this case are actually the ones that are coming in from the end of the modules. And the ones on the left are going to those short power routed tracks. So the sufficient solution, the good enough solution is to connect those longer lines to each other. So what you'd want to do is connect the pad, like the upper pad that I have there in blue. You connect uh, the rightmost blue pad. You connect that to its equivalent on the other side, and then the red one on the lower side to its equivalent on the other side. The As I mentioned, on the left side of this diagram or photo, the pads that you have there, those are for the power routing. So if you want to connect those short power routing segments to each other to make sure that you get those connected, then you would connect that upper blue and the lowermost red to each other on both sides. So you'd need to then pass the wires, uh, you know, solder wire on there and go to the other side and solder it to its equivalent on the other end of it. So now that we kind of understand generally what the inside of this thing looks like, we're ready to sort of finish our disassembly, right? You feel safe, you understand what it looks like, and you sort of know what you're dealing with. So we need to open up the rest of the back. So we take out the other three screws. That's going to expose the other pair of uh, turnout mechanisms under there. And then there's one more thing we need to remove out of that central um, section. There's a plastic bit. You just take a small screwdriver, kind of pry that up, and it'll pop right out. And once you have that out, then this is sort of the whole kit and caboodle ready to do its work. And so you've got uh, the wires that pass from side to side to actuate the, the turnout machines. And then um, we've got all of the space available to us to do, to do our connections. Now, the first thing I like to do whenever I'm doing a project like this is um, I want to put the solder onto the pads before I start futzing in with the wire. I don't want to hold the wire down and solder all at the same time. That's really not a very effective way to do this because you want to stay off of this pad as much as you can with that heat. So really quickly, I just drop a very small amount of solder into to the four places that I would want it. And so that's, you can see the solder on the right. It's at the, at the upper and, and lower edges. And then there on the left side of those pads, it's towards the middle. So I've got four solder pads set up. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, essentially what's happening inside of there is you want to stay, that, that central segment there is the frog, and then you want to stay out of that swing arm area that I've sort of highlighted in those red dashed lines. You want to stay out of that area so that you don't put any solder or anything in there because that mechanism needs to move back and forth. So keep the solder out on the far edges of that turnout.
And and also note that on this particular, I've I've gone to the other side on this particular uh, image, so it's sort of the reverse mirror image of what we were looking at a moment ago. So in this case, on the left side of this pad, that's the the track that's coming or the the wires that are coming in from the end of the track piece, and then the ones on the right that are farther apart, those are the ones that are feeding the uh, the power routed track segments in the middle. So the, the good enough solution is this. You want to connect those two inner, like the closer in pads that are farther out, but closer to the middle. You connect those to each other. So you connect the top two to each other and the lower two to each other. This would be plenty. That's going to connect the left and the right. You can button this thing back up again and you'd be good to go. But as I mentioned earlier, what I wanted to do is not only connect the two sides, but in this example, I also wanted to connect those two power routed segments that are in the middle. So in order to do that, I need to add two more wires. So those two wires are going to go from those pads that are closer to the middle, but further away uh, from the top and bottom of this image. So I connected one side to the other in both of those cases so that they can power route right through those particular turnouts. That'll ensure that if for some reason later down the road, this mechanism stops working well, uh, then one of them can power out for both sides. But again, you want that long piece of wire that goes from one side to the other. That's the one you need in order to actually have the, the electrical passing from the left to the right. One thing I did want to note is make sure when you're doing that soldering on those pads, um, just the lightest bit of solder. As you recall, these things have a metal lid on the top. You don't want a big glob of solder on there that's going to end up touching that metal lid because then you could cause a short. So um, you don't want to be the guy who's causing the, the shorts on your, your layout. So um, this just make sure you put the littlest bit of solder is plenty and you tin the end of the wires before you put them on there. So you tin the end with a little bit of solder. You got a little pad of solder and there's just a quick heat and it'll hold the thing right in place. No problem. So. Now what you've got, when you finish that up, you've buttoned it all back up and put the back back on, that central plastic piece and those two metal pieces, put in those three screws on each side, you flip it over, and it looks just like it did when you started, except now the left to right is electrically connected, and that's it. So hopefully this was helpful to you, and I look forward to talking to you later.